morning once again. Wayne Halfway here with some good seeds on this uh, chilly uh, Valentine's Day morning here. Uh, pretty cold here in Montana. It's been interesting for me to see the number of posts that I've watched on Facebook of where uh, some of you out on the coast are getting snow and that's awesome. Uh, beautiful pictures. Thanks for sharing those. It's uh, always a blessing to see those. And I pray this Valentine's Day you are sharing some good thoughts, some love with one another, your loved ones, family, friends, and uh, that most of all, the love of Jesus Christ will uh, be shed abroad in all of our hearts so that we share that love with people that are around us and especially with people who are outside of Christ who don't know the Lord. Uh, let them know about that God loves them today too. I, I love sharing these thoughts with you on uh, these mornings, some good seeds. So uh, this morning from Leviticus chapters 23 and 24, Psalm 24 and Acts 21, had a little thought that came from Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4. And by the way, I've really enjoyed uh, reading through Leviticus again. It's uh, it, it's one of those books that, uh, well, I, you can't read through it and not understand that God is a God who is a, a, a very orderly God, uh, precise in all that he does. Uh, you can't read through there and not realize that about God. Things were to be done in an orderly fashion, even in the way that they moved from place to place as we looked in Exodus, how they broke the camp and moved, uh, and all those ordinances, the way that they offered the sacrifice, all that was to be done in a very precise and orderly fashion, uh, performed to the letter. And in light of that, I also think that we must not be um, casual, I guess is the word I'm looking for, in our approach to him. He is a holy God. He is an awesome God, great in power, to be feared for sure. Uh, I'm thankful for the fact that, that we can come to him. Uh, the New Testament says uh, Papa God, you know, we call him Father God, Papa God. There is that intimacy and that, that sense of, of closeness that we have with him. But at the same time, Jesus said, don't fear those who can just kill your body but fear him who can kill body and soul and cast into hell. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome thing that we can come to him uh, and have that closeness. And uh, it's an awesome thing that we can come to God and have that intimacy and that closeness. But at the same time, we need to understand that he is God. And I, I don't think that we can just uh, uh, be careless in our approach to him, but we must come to him with reverence and, and awe for who he is and for what he has done. I, I think it's a really an important consideration. Grace is free, but it isn't uh, sloppy agape, as someone coined that phrase either. God still requires repentance and the very nature of repentance demands that there is a, a change in our lives. We can't just come to God and expect that we're just gonna keep on going, do the same things that we uh, have always done. Uh, repentance requires a, a, a 180 degree turn. I'm thankful, though, that even if we do fail, we've repented. Uh, who knows how many times of the same thing? God still is willing to forgive. Uh, Jesus said if your neighbor comes to you seven, seven times in a day, he, he sins against you and fails you, and seven times comes and says, I repent, what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to forgive. If that's true of us in our relationship with one another, how much truer it is in our relationship with the Lord. He encourages us to come. That's a part of our relationship to him. But that, that phrase, the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall perform at their appointed times in Leviticus 23 verse 4. Their appointed times. God has order. We need to be careful in our approach to him. And uh, You know, the, the term disciple, for example. What does that mean? It means disciplined learner. Uh, we need to have our lives ordered in a, in, a, in a fashion so that we are consistently in the word, consistently hearing from God, uh, develop a plan for doing that. And I, I pray that uh, these little encouragements that you're getting from me from day to day will, will be an encouragement to you as well. And hey, if they are an encouragement to you, uh, hey, drop me a note. Uh, let me know something that you've gotten from the Word. That will be a blessing to me to hear from you in that way too. I appreciate the comments that I get from time to time. Those are really special to me and, and I will answer and uh, get back to you with, with some thoughts and uh, just appreciate that you sharing with me as well. And uh, also, of course, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, 
like us on Facebook, share it. I, I appreciate those of you when I see that you have shared that, uh, that little video with people. So appreciate you doing that. I, I, I really pray that this is a blessing to you and that you are encouraged in the Lord. Uh, I know uh, we all go through our stuff. We all have our days. I've been there, done that. But as we share the things that God is doing in our lives with one another, it encourages us, it builds us up, and that's uh, the purpose of it, that we might edify one another and build one another up. And so I want to encourage you in that today. So my prayer today on this Valentine's Day, that the love of Jesus Christ and the grace of God would just be uh, overflowing in your heart and life and that the Lord would bless you and that you would be a blessing to the people that you come in contact with today. God bless you. Amen.